Hi everybody, today I'm gonna to be making blueberry muffins. This falls in the quick bread category because it's quick to make, quick to bake. Uh, different from what we would have for yeast breads, which count on obviously yeast to rise and take a really long time with fermenting and proofing. Uh, quick breads um, would include muffins, scones, biscuits, things like banana bread. Um, so they're all, they very easily come together. The method that we're gonna use today is the muffin mixing method. Uh, the reason that we use this method is because the way that uh, the state that our fat is in. We're going to be using melted butter for this, but any liquid fat, um, whether you're using vegetable oil or grapeseed oil, olive oil, um, is going to be best done by using this method. So our ingredients for today um, are going to be divided into our wet ingredients and our dry ingredients. So this is a really different method from creaming method that you may have used for cookies or cakes or things like that. I'm going to start by sifting all my dry ingredients together so that these are ready to go as soon as my wet ingredients come together. So I'm going to sift these just straight into my bowl. I have all my dry ingredients in here, so now I'm just going to go ahead and add in my lemon zest now. Even though you could think of this as a wet ingredient, since I always mix my wets together with a whisk, the zest would just get caught up in the whisk, so I find it easier to go ahead and put this in with the dries. And it gives me a chance to make sure also that all of my dry ingredients, even though I sifted them together, um, I want to make sure that they are equally uh, mixed. Now I'm ready to mix my wet ingredients all together. So I'm going to start with my eggs so that I can go ahead and just break these up a little bit. And add in your vanilla extract. The sour cream is going to give us a nice little tang um, with that little bit of acidity. Um, and also the... Um, this is gonna give us a really nice moist and tender crumb because of the fat in this. So sour cream is great to use in muffins. Um, if you wanna pick something that's a little bit lighter, um, Greek yogurt is also um, a good substitution. Get that mixed in. Now my milk is gonna go in. I went ahead and I heated up this milk until it's about 70 degrees. Um, this is gonna be really helpful for when it's time to incorporate our butter. So my eggs are a little bit cool. Um, my sour cream is cold. And when butter, uh, of course, is cold, it wants to be a solid. So since this recipe is using butter in its liquid state, I want to bring the rest of my liquids uh, a little bit warmer so that the coldness of these other dairy and eggs doesn't set up my butter. So it is key that whenever we are making this recipe that um, it is very quick to go together. So that was the reason that I went ahead and sifted all my dries together so that the last thing that's happening now um, before I put these together is that my butter is going into my wets and then my wets can immediately go into my dries. I'm gonna mix this just until it's combined and then as soon as it's combined, I'm gonna put my wet into dry. So that's always our, our method when we are mixing by the muffin method is wet into dry. Okay. One step, I'm gonna pour these in. And now I'm gonna fold. So when we're folding, we're gently incorporating these ingredients together. I don't wanna mix like crazy. Um, the one thing about uh, muffin method, although it is very quick to come together, it's also very easily overmixed. 
what happens when we're over mixing is that you are over developing the gluten structure. So gluten is those strands uh, that form internally that would give products their chew. So if we think about on the low gluten development end, we have a cake, very, very tender. On the high gluten amount, think about a bagel or a pizza crust, very, very chewy. So that is uh, sort of the, the scale that, that you wanna think about with gluten development. So we want our muffins to be very tender, so we want it low gluten development. Gluten actually forms when you have uh, wheat flour moistened in some way and then with agitation. So the more that we agitate this, the stronger that gluten formation becomes. If you overmix um, quick breads, what happens is you actually get what's called tunneling. So it's these tubular holes that run through your muffin or your, your loaf of quick bread. Um, so it's a visual clue that you have overmixed and then you will taste that in the mouthfeel as well. So now uh, I'm gonna fold in my blueberries. I'm using frozen blueberries. Yes, you could absolutely use fresh blueberries. Uh, frozen are available all year round and their sugar content is very uh, consistent. So they're usually a good option um, for being able to make blueberry menus if they're on your menu all year long and also being able to keep your cost a lot more consistent. You want to measure them out, but you want to keep them in the freezer until you're ready to use. So I'm going to go ahead and add these in. And we want to be quickly and deliberately folding these together because as you can see already, as soon as um, the frozen blueberries start to thaw on the outside, they're going to leave these blue uh, traces. So if I keep folding and folding and stirring and stirring, I'm going to end up with gray. Uh, batter, which I don't want to have. A few of these swirls is, is quite nice, but we want to make sure that we're not doing more than that. If you're using fresh blueberries, you don't have to worry about this problem because they aren't releasing juice as readily as frozen blueberries are. So now these are ready to portion. I'm going to portion these into standard size muffin pans. You can use muffin liners. I've just used some pan spray and I'm using a yellow number 20 scoop for this. So when we are scooping, you want to come up right up on the side of the bowl and we want to do level scoops. The nice thing about this recipe also is that it uses baking powder. So double acting baking powder um, releases carbon dioxide. That's the leavening agent. Um, double acting baking powder uh, releases its first um, amount of carbon dioxide when it is moistened. It already has acid within the baking powder. Um, so it's, it is ready to produce that CO2. The second action, the rising action, has to come from heat. So you won't get the full rising uh, and release of CO2 until these go into the oven. So that is a big advantage for bakers is that we can make this batter ahead of time and then we can bake the next day or even two days after. Um, the longer that time goes, the rising action will be lower. So you wouldn't want to hang this around for you know a week. Then you, you wouldn't get a, a good outcome. But we could make this batter minus the blueberries. And then when we're ready to bake, we could take that batter out of the refrigerator, fold in our blueberries, and then bake. Um, it's also very customizable as well. Um, instead of me using blueberries, I could uh, fold in other IQF fruits um, and make with this base recipe, 
Um, I could make many other different kinds of muffins by simply um, changing up my fruits. So maybe I would want to make uh, cranberry walnut so I could have my base uh, muffin mix come out and then I fold in cranberries and some chopped walnuts. Um, and this way it's very easily customizable and you're cutting down your labor as well. Um, you're not having to come in, make fresh batter every day and then bake those off. You can make enough batter to last for a few days and then just bake off what you need every morning and customize it as well so you don't have to have you know five or six different batters. You can have one base batter um, and then customize it with the inclusions that you are adding it in. So I'm gonna let these bake um, and then we'll check on them and, and see how the mixing process came out, make sure we didn't over mix and check for the tunneling. I wanted to do a few different tests playing around with oven temperature and the size of my muffins since I'm baking at home and not in my regular work kitchen because of COVID. And so now you can see the different ways that these come out. So these are my uh, first ones I did here. Everything I, I uh, baked, I used the yellow scoop, um, which is a one and five eight ounce uh, volume capacity. So this I used uh, a traditional muffin pan. I used one scoop and you can see that even with these um, the volume is a little low. I probably if I was going to use this size again I would do uh, one and a half scoops uh, to give these a little more height. You can also see that the color is a little pale. So these I baked at 325 which my um, original recipe intended and when I am baking at work this is a great temperature but I usually am baking in an oven that has some sort of convection fan which I don't have at home so in the absence of that I, you can see that I didn't get the nice um, caramelization of the crust the next one I moved up to um, a large muffin tin. So uh, the standard muffin tin has 12 in your, your home size. If you are working commercial, they usually have 20 to 24. Um, these are the large ones. So these pans only have um, six uh, muffins that they hold in each pan. These I used two yellow scoops. Um, and I increased the temperature from 325 to 350. Um, so you can see the color is a little bit better, especially on the contact surface with the pan, but they're still a little bit low as far as the size and the appearance and us wanting to have this look nice and um, abundant uh, in our size of muffin. These last ones that I did, so this was also the large size muffin, also baked at 350, but these I did three of the yellow scoops, and I think that these came out the best. They have a really good crust caramelization, and even the tops are caramelized um, better. There's only a a uh, two to three minute time difference in baking um, these two, where these had two scoops and these had three, um, but the surface of the muffin also had uh, longer to continue to caramelize, um, so it got a much nicer crust color. So I think going forward, if I was baking these at home again, these would be the ones that I, I would go for. I think they have the best color um, and the best size. So um, you can see the, the variety um, of what we have here. For this size batch that I made, this is all the batter. Um, I ate two of these already, full disclosure. Um, so you would get, um, I got 30 total scoops um, out of that batter. So you can, um, adjust for whatever size muffins you like to have to know what your total yield would be. If I was gonna be doing um, these size muffins, I would get 10 of those. So um, 30 tiny, tiny muffins uh, versus uh, 10 beautiful, nice, well caramelized muffins. Let's talk about internal texture. So when I was mixing, I talked about wanting to avoid over mixing over mixing um, so you didn't end up with tunneling so you can see right in here we have some of these just small little air pockets um, but overall this is a nice 
even crumb. Our air cell size is pretty consistent. It's also a nice tight crumb. I don't have a really loose open crumb with lots of large air pockets. So this is exactly what we wanna see from our mixing with the muffin method.